Just a reminder that this and all my other videos are made for doll collectors or adults buying dolls for others. This is not a video for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, Internet. My name is Kelsey, and welcome back to my closet. Happy Monday, guys. And what better way to start off the work week than with some doll news? So let us get right into it. Haven't really gotten a chance to talk about these yet, even though their pictures have been floating around for like a week. But we have in and out of box pictures of Western Cutie and Golden Heart, which is the next set of best friends from OMG. I mean, I wasn't really into either of them when we had just a very distant, blurry picture of their boxes, and even more so now I'm just not feeling either of them. Western Cutie in particular, she's just very tacky and gives me vibes of like the really early OMGs that I found to be just so out there with their fashion that I couldn't enjoy them. And I mean, I know some people are here for that, so it's nothing against you if that's your personal taste. It's just not mine. Separately though, I think she does have some decent pieces. I mean, the jeans might be a little bit too too much fringe on them, but she's got that bodysuit that could be used with different things. She's got some nice earrings, the gold boots and gold jewelry. It's just when it's all together, it's just like, whoa. <laughs> And that hat, I really do not like. It looks like a lampshade. Golden Heart kind of has the opposite problem. Instead of being like overly tacky or whatever, she's just kind of underwhelming. I mean, she has a very pretty color scheme. I think she would be well suited for a Valentine's Day doll, especially with a name like Golden Heart. And I think her jacket is really cool. I like that it's got print on the lining on the inside, but her shoes are like plain pink boots. I mean, there's some texture in it, but it's it's like they were trying to make them look like fabric boots, but in plastic. And we know that they can do fabric boots because they been doing them like crazy on Rainbow High. Kind of disappointing, and I'm not really sure how she's like an opposite to Western Cutie. I'm not really sure if she has like a reference that she's doing that I'm not understanding. But yeah, to me, she's just kind of there. Next, from Bratz, we have our first look at Cult Gaia Yasmin. I knew I was gonna like the Cult Gaia dolls a lot more than the Moa Lola ones after we saw what they looked like. And she is very pretty. She comes with two full outfits, two purses, two pairs of earrings, plus a mannequin. And I didn't realize this until very recently, which I guess that shows how much I think about like the people behind the dolls. But Cult Gaia is made by Isaac Larian's daughter, who is the namesake for Yasmin. So it's all pretty fitting all together that they're collaborating on Bratz dolls, including Yasmin. So I think that aspect of it adds a little bit more charm to the dolls themselves, just knowing that. I will say the first outfit kind of looks pretty standard like something you could get on a regular brat stall. Like if you showed this to me and didn't tell me that it was a designer collaboration, I would honestly have no idea unless I was familiar with that designer and recognized the pieces, which I'm not. So I'm sure that's going to put some people off on spending the $60 price tag on her, but in the end, you're paying for the label. And the fact that the second dress is made of like chain mail. Plus she does have extra articulation. She's got the upper arm, the elbow, and the wrist. So not all bad, very pretty. Now, here's the big reason why I wanted to put this video out. Because Dreamella, who I don't really talk about that much because I just do not care, is coming out with a line called Extra Iconic. Do I even need to say it? <laughs> I just... I can't, I, I don't, I don't need to go into it. You guys know. I will say that it's nice to see some better quality clothing pieces. I'm still not into the faces. I wish they would invest in creating some different molds because they're still just kind of square jawed and bland. But putting the faces aside, we have layering, we have painted details on the sneakers on the one doll, different materials, 
materials to make the different clothing pieces. A couple of them are wearing socks. They have little hair accessories, earrings. And I understand Dreamella is supposed to be more of a budget line in the first place. So the fact that they had cheaper clothing in the regular line is understandable to keep their price low. What's cool about these is that they are gonna be $15, which is only a little bit more than the standard Dream Ella doll and come with a lot more stuff. Does that mean that the materials, while they kind of look nice from the outside, are actually really cheap when you touch them? I don't know. We will have to wait until we can feel them to find out. Of course, I'm not getting any of these. But they also have a knee articulation, which is not standard on the other Dream Ella dolls. Would have been nice to also get an elbow, but I guess they don't want to make them too expensive. So putting aside the blatant shade that they're throwing at Barbie Extra, they're all right. I'm not mad. Finally, we are getting away from MGA. This is something that I am like super excited about. I never thought this would actually happen, but Lulu Pop dolls are here. They're available on Amazon. If you're not familiar with Lulu Pop, basically it's like a Korean version of OMG, but combined with sort of a Vocaloid digital idol thing. They have songs, they're 3D animated, and they have dolls. And they have not only fashion dolls, size dolls, but also small dolls that actually have rooted hair. For a while, you were only able to get them on eBay from a secondhand seller who's able to secure them from Korea. Despite the fact that they clearly have some inspiration from OMG in their design, I kind of prefer their faces a little bit. They've got a little something different. I don't know if it's the eye shape or the lip shape that kind of makes them less bug-eyed because I've always found OMG to have that bug-eye look. Not that I dislike them, but it took me a lot longer to warm up to OMG faces. Whereas these, if OMG faces had looked like this, I probably would have liked them a lot sooner. The fashion dolls are $35.99 each, and the minis are $25.99. And the minis, I think that price is pretty steep because while they do come with their little stage carrying case, some accessories and have rooted hair, they are a small doll with little articulation and rubber clothes. So while they're super cute, and I like them a lot more than like LOL tots, I don't think I would wanna spend $25.99 on one. You do get to choose which one you want. It's not a surprise box, so that's a plus. For the dolls though, the regular size dolls, I think $35.99 is comparable to what some OMGs are, depending on which line it is and what they come with. I think some of the higher price also comes from the import, probably. I'm not sure what goes on behind the scenes to get them here but it has to cost something. So they gotta recoup that. But I definitely wanna get one. I'm not sure which one though, because they're all super cute, but I really wanna see what they're like because they look really good quality. And I've had my eye on them for a while and I went back and forth about buying them on eBay, but they were like twice as much from a secondhand seller. So I am glad that I waited. And with that guys, that's everything that I want to talk about. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and until next time, bye!